Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, I welcome you all to our second uh, webinar on AutoSAR. As, uh, as we have all planned, uh, this is a series of webinar uh, in helping engineers become AutoSAR compliant. And uh, this is the second webinar. Last week, we had, uh, last month, uh, we had discussed about uh, building uh, uh, what is an AutoSAR architecture. So this, this series of webinars is organized on the first Thursday of every month. And uh, this week we will be talking about uh, application software component in AutoZer. How do we build an application software component in our, uh, in AutoZer? All right, so this will be like say 90% uh, of our uh, web, uh, webinar will be hands-on. So we will be using tools to build our uh, application software component. That's a quick background and I welcome you all again to this wonderful afternoon. All right, quick background about us. Uh, we are answered. We are a next generation tooling and engineering service company. We primarily work with, or we only work with automotive and aerospace and semiconductor industries. We build products for the uh, automotive industry, especially uh, products on uh, system testing, products on unit testing, primarily helping our customers uh, facilitate their testing process or speed up the process. We also do custom uh, tool development uh, based upon customer requirements in terms of automation, in terms of various other aspects. Uh, we also do custom tool development for our clients. We also provide uh, system testers, uh, we uh, unit testers and uh, uh, agile uh, testers to various uh, clients uh, as part of a consulting service. And we also do offer uh, training uh, on Eclipse uh, and uh, various other automotive uh, engineering services. And a quick uh, background about me, uh, I'm part of Ansett uh, as the, a director of research and development, 16 years of experience in automotive electronics, IoT and radio frequency electronics. So that's a quick background about me and the company. Let's dwell into the organization. Uh, I hope uh, I'm loud and clear. Just can I have a heads up from any one of you if it's clear? It's clear. Yeah, thanks. So let's uh, go forward. So the motive of the webinar, as I said, this is part of our Artozar development uh, plan. Uh, the last week we had talked, uh, touched upon AutoZar architecture. We will just quickly uh, touch upon that uh, uh, in terms of the architecture and in terms of the methodology. We will just go through that. And uh, the next step is uh, we will uh, go ahead and build an AutoZar application software component using AutoP, which is one of the uh, most famous tools uh, as per AutoZar uh, standard. So we'll just go ahead and do that. That's the plan for today's session. So what is AutoZar? Uh, like, uh, uh, we'll spend like say 10 to 15 minutes on a quick background and uh, on the architecture and uh, things like that. And the rest of the 45 minutes to 50 minutes we will spend uh, on building the application AutoZar comp. And we'll, re we'll run you on how to build this component from the scratch. That will be the plan. So like I, uh, we had mentioned earlier, AutoZar is uh, primarily a technology which tries and separates the automotive software from the hardware. Uh, Earlier, the OEMs or the original equipment manufacturer, the car manufacturer used to have, you had to pay for the application software plus the basic software to integrate the application software for the hardware. But with AutoZar on board, they want to focus exclusively on paying for the application software. Uh, and that is one of the reasons why AutoZar uh, uh, came to existence. One. Second, whenever there was a change in the hardware infrastructure, the whole application software component had to be destroyed and built from the scratch. Uh, the, 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 the millions of lines of code which were tested uh, for robustness uh, because of the change of hardware had to be literally scratched. So AutoZar uh, uh, is, a, is a technology where we try to build, uh, where we separate the application software completely from the hardware. So even in terms of uh, when the hardware is replaced, we could still use the existing code. That's the whole, with some minor changes, we could still use the existing code. That's the whole idea of uh, uh, AutoZar or why AutoZar came into existence, two primary reasons, right? So uh, AutoZar can be primarily uh, divided into three layers, the application layer, uh, the runtime environment layer, and the basic software. These are the three major layers uh, we can uh, talk about in terms of uh, AutoZar. 
Uh, so the application is layer is layer where you build the application software component, or that's the region where uh, 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 the actual uh, application uh, takes place. Examples like say it could be an airbag application, uh, it could be a powertrain application, or it could be any other application. So it's an application uh, component. A uh, software component is built here. Runtime environment uh, is primarily responsible for two when two application software components when two components. Uh, application software component can be broken into smaller pieces. Uh, we can call them atomic software components. When two atomic software components in the application need to communicate, and if they are in the same microcontroller, then they can actually communicate uh, through the runtime environment. Uh, the runtime environment is also responsible for helping the application software component to communicate with the basic software. That's the second uh, important aspect of uh, uh, the runtime environment, primary reason, right? And we have the prior basic software layer, which includes uh, three major layers the services layer, PC abstraction layer, and the microcontroller abstraction layer. Uh, you could look into our previous webinar just in case you need uh, some reference on those layers. Uh, but as of now, we'll just go forward and focus exclusively on the application layer. Yeah. So, like I mentioned, application layer is the layer for which the OEM is ready to pay. It is the software uh, uh, that does the actual, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, work. And uh, the objective of this webinar is to build an application software component using of That's the primary uh, objective of this uh, webinar. All right. So I just have to touch upon the AutoZar methodology just to make sure that we are all on the same page when it comes to our software development. Uh, so what is the AutoZar methodology? Uh, a quick background. Uh, so the AutoZar methodology works like this. You have a uh, you have a system level file that's being generated, which is like an uh, ARXML XML file, generally XML file. When it is in the AutoZar standard, it's called as an ARXML file. All right, so this uh, uh, ARXML file uh, takes care of all the system requirements in terms of the higher infrastructure that's required to build the software. And once you have this uh, ARXML file uh, that's to be created, then you it is made to contract with the RTE and uh, you generate a, a .h file. Similarly, uh, with all the uh, ECU system mapping, here it is mapped with RTE, here it is mapped with the other uh, system components and you generate an ECU extract, all right? Uh, so here you can actually break it into two parts. One is like say build the application software component. This is building the application software component here. And here is what we call as configuring the BSW, uh, which uh, when we say configuring the BSW, it includes four uh, parts, maybe the RTE, OS, BSW actual, and the ESE abstraction. You configure all those layers, build, bring all these things together and convert to make and do it. So this is on a very fast note. If I have to talk specifically in terms of application software component development, then I will say this is the whole process. It can be like say basically divided into four steps. The first step is build a system level model, all right, with all the software components uh, required. So you build a system model, that's the first step. The second step is uh, we will uh, uh, do an ECU extraction and they do software multiple instantiation. That is the second step. And then you integrate it with the BSW. So uh, this is the basic application uh, uh, process. It, as I said, it could be just a four step process that we are talking about. And today's uh, topic of discussion is limited to developing the system model. So in the future webinar, next week we will be, I mean, next seminar webinar, we will be talking about how do we build ECU extracts and then we'll see how do we connect it to the BSW and make it a complete AutoSAR uh, experience. That's the whole idea. But as of now, this webinar will be focusing exclusively on building a system level model. That's the whole idea of this webinar. All right. All right. So uh, getting into, before we step on or open the uh, tool, uh, one important step is uh, uh, when we talk about an application software component, all right. Uh, uh, this can be broken up into when when we start building an application software component uh, these are things that we need to uh, remember one uh, the step one is to build an atomic software component which is 
uh, equivalent to a VFB level, what uh, the virtual function bus level, which we had discussed uh, earlier. Uh, so that's the first step that we need to do. And the second step is what we call it as a, uh, we, uh, we characterize or configure the system uh, uh, internal behavior, the software component internal behavior, that will be the second step. And the third step will be, how do we configure the implementation? How do we uh, configure the software implementation? So these are the three uh, steps. Uh, what we call it as the VFB level, the RTE level, and the implementation level. And we will be uh, doing the, I mean, we will be carrying out these three steps in this uh, webinar, all right? So just to come back on that, as I said, uh, today we will be designing this application software components in terms of a system model. That's the first step. Uh, that's what we're going to focus on. And uh, to do make this to happen, it, this is divided into three steps. So the application software component development in a system model level is broken into three steps. One is start configuring the atomic software component. Second is configure the internal behavior. And the third is do an FWC implementation. You will understand it much better when we uh, do it. So yeah, that's where we are. All right, so just a quick rack, a recap about uh, some of the components and uh, the terms that we will be using today. Uh, like I want to just uh, touch up on a few things uh, that we had discussed earlier in last uh, webinar. One is uh, uh, there are uh, two types of uh, uh, interfaces that uh, usually are used in the application layer. Uh, one is the client server interface and the second one is the uh, sender receiver interface. Uh, so we, this is the example of a client server interface. Uh, so a client port, this is a VFP level implementation where you have, this is the client port, all right? And this is a server port. This is the symbol for a server port. And uh, this is the uh, uh, second uh, interface that we are talking about. Uh, this is a, a receiver interface. And this is a, uh, what do you call it as a, uh, uh, sender interface. I mean, uh, this is a sender port and this is a receiver port. All right. So uh, these are the uh, four components that we are talking about. Uh, a send. First, we will break it into interfaces, two interfaces, uh, like we have here, sender receiver interface, and then we have a client server interface. These are the two interfaces. And in terms of ports, again, we have two ports. One is the sender port and the receiver port. This is the uh, sender port. It's moving away from the software component. That's why it's called sender port. And this is the receiver port. It's coming into the software component. All right, the sender port is represented by P port. It's called P port in not other standard. And the receiver port in a sender receiver interface is called as an R port. All right, the same thing, uh, we have the second type of interface, which is the client server interface. All right, these are the two client server interfaces. In a client server interface, uh, the, the, the port, the port which requests for a service is called client. All right, so this is a client because it's requesting an operation. It's requesting an operation. And the port which provides an operation is called as an provider port or a server interface. So this is a server interface. So this is a quick background about uh, the client server interface and the uh, uh, sorry, client server interface and the sender receiver interface. And these are the four types of ports that we are talking about, all right? So let's move on. And uh, this is the example that we had seen last week. Uh, and this is the, uh, uh, this is what we are going to build in for today's uh, system level model. So this is an example of uh, Autozar example, a seat heating control example that's uh, mentioned in our Autozar document and we have taken the same example. All right, uh, so there is a uh, three, I, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There are seven software components. All right, so I'm going to simplify this in the next slide, but there are primarily there are seven software components. There is a seat heating control. Okay, let me explain the use case in the first place. So let's assume this is a seat uh, heating control uh, application. So when a car, uh, when a passenger is seated on a seat and he turns on the heater, then the coil, uh, the heater is turned on one 
and there is also an indication on the diagnostic board that the heater is set to a temperature of 25 degrees or whatever temperature that he says so that's the whole idea right i'll repeat the use case so a passenger gets sits on the driver seat he turns on the heater and sets the temperature to 25 degrees c uh, and uh, uh, the, this this uh, uh, request of the passenger uh, is uh, executed by turning on the heater plus also indicating uh, to the passenger that the temperature has been uh, modified to 25 degrees all right so to make this happen let's assume that uh, uh, this is a uh, india and there's a passenger So the seat heating control element is the controlling element. Uh, uh, it turns on the heater. It sends the in, uh, information to the heater. Uh, this is the heater, all right, or the coil, whatever you call it. It turns. It sends an information to the coil saying that, excuse me, uh, you should turn on the heater. That's the first and uh, foremost thing. And it also sends a request to the uh, LED dial saying that. Uh, uh, which uh, show the temperature or display the temperature, whatever you call it. All right, so that's the two uh, requests that this is served by this uh, particular application software component. And uh, the request of this application software component is served by uh, the LED software component and the heater software component. All right, so the same uh, is repeated on the left-hand side. If there's a, a gentleman who's sitting on the passenger side uh, and he turns on the heater, uh, uh, this controller will take the information from the pa passenger seat and you will turn on the heater and you will also display it on the LED. So that's the plan. So this is the whole uh, uh, experiment or this is the whole uh, software component development process that we are interested in. There's a power management uh, software. To make simple life simple, we have just eliminated this power management and we just restricted our scope to the application. All right. So I've broken this, uh, uh, this is a, a new uh, seating control uh, experiment or the uh, application that we have uh, shown here, all right, uh, at a virtual function bus level. So as I said, this is the first step that we need to do. We'll have to uh, describe the software component in terms of a virtual function bus, all right. Uh, so uh, that's exactly what is uh, done here. So this is the heat uh, uh, heating controller. Uh, so there are, instead of having two software components here, you can merge this and uh, make it as one uh, heating controller software component because left uh, it either may be controlling the left hand uh, heater or the left hand LED or the right hand side. But either way, the software component does the same function. So it is like say converted into one software component. Uh, and uh, there is here you find the LED dial which is a sensor uh, or an actuator, and you have the coil here. You have the coil here, right-hand coil and the right-hand LED dial. This is the, I'm sorry. This is the left-hand LED and the left-hand coil, all right? So uh, this uh, controller element sends the data to the LED software component through the sender receiver port, all right? That this is the sender port and uh, this is the receiver port and this is the sender receiver interface. All right. So he, the heating element sends the data from this software component to the LED software component through the sender receiver interface. And this is the sender port and this is the receiver port. All right. The heating element requests for an operation from the coil the request is say, turn on the heater, all right? So he's requesting an, uh, this, uh, this uh, software component for a operation to be done. And this coil software component serves this request. So this coil is called as a server uh, platform. And this is the uh, client platform, just like what we have seen, all right? Uh, so this is an indication, this is a symbol. Uh, which says that this is a request, I mean, this is a client port, and this is a server port, and this is a client server interface. This is a sender port, and this is a receiver port, and this is the sender receiver interface. So what is a VFB level uh, software design is, it defines 
the software components you see there is you have defined the software components step one you have defined the ports and you've also explained how these ports communicate if we are able to define this this is called as a vfb level or a virtual function bus implementation all right so this is a simple example of a virtual function bus implementation of a application software component all right so if you are designing some uh, this software component or uh, this architecture using a tool like matlab then you might probably use this particular kind of uh, a schematic diagram or a, what is called a famously called as a simulink based uh, uh, diagram to uh, represent the component or uh, to represent the virtual function bus but we will be using a tool called artop uh, which is basically an eclipse uh, based tool and there you will use something called as a what is it uh, a tree based approach to define the virtual function bus level uh, diagram so i want to repeat so first we will define everything on the virtual function bus level the second is we will go on to implement uh, uh, in the it in the rte level and the third is we will go on to do the implementation so these are the three steps that is involved in configuring a application software component at a at a application layer level all right so so these are the three steps right so i just broken those steps uh, into smaller pieces like i said we need to create all the application software components i'm uh, maybe we'll start with one so this is the process that we will be starting so we will start with building this heating element application software component all right that's the first step then we will create the ports for these components then we will create the interfaces all right so these are our, so these are the ports and then we will create the interfaces the next step is we will link the ports and the interface so we will link the port and the interface that will be the next step and then you will re re replicate this whole process for all the software components right so uh, we have other software components uh, if we once we finish this we will replicate it for the led software component and the coil software component so we will replicate the process for these two software components that will be the next step and then we will do an rte level configuration which is primarily set the internal behavior and configure the runnables and instantiate if necessary so that will be the second uh, i mean second level of function we will be doing and then finally we will do the implementation so that's the plan for today and uh, this is the architecture that we are going to implement for today's uh, example so uh, that's a, that's all about the what we have uh, in terms of a theoretical perspective so i will keep this as a reference and uh, we will just switch between these two guys as and when necessary deemed necessary uh, i am going to move on to artop so yeah so artop is an uh like i said uh, artop is an eclipse based uh, tool uh, which is used for developing system level uh, 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 components and you can actually export the ar xml file with all the uh, autos are uh, uh, components attached to it and uh, yeah so that will be the plan uh, we will go ahead and execute this uh, 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 this application software component in artop that's the plan and uh, the next uh, future sessions we'll talk about how we go on and build an application configure the rt and uh, make these guys communicate so that is all left and generate an easy extract that's something that we uh, intend to do it in the future sessions so let's go on and do it uh, i'll follow this procedure so the first step is uh, to create an application software component and before that uh, uh, you need to download rtop uh, this is the tool you can download rtop uh, uh you can actually ask your company and uh, get this uh, tool downloaded it's a, it's a tool which is free uh, for all uh, uh, members of autosar and uh, people who are like actively contributing in autosar group so you can uh, reach out to your company to download this tool it's an eclipse based tool so that's a quick background about artop and artop in artop you can do a tree level uh, development of uh, autosar system level component design yeah so the first step is primarily you start a new project uh, i'll call this as an autos or project and i will call this as uh, uh, webinar 
I'm sorry. Uh, heating. Hi, Kartik. Uh, sorry okay. to interrupt. Uh, this our top screen is not visible. I think. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, so Manju. Uh, um, sorry. I'm going to stop sharing. And uh, I'm going to probably share the desktop, which is will be a better idea. Share screen and uh, whiteboard. Yeah. I'm sorry, not the whiteboard. Uh -oh. Stop share. Share screen. Can you see the auto search screen? I'm sorry, our top screen? Yeah, yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, like I mentioned, our uh, uh, top is uh, an Eclipse based tool, like you'd see it in the uh, UX or Revive. And uh, you can actually download it using your company ID and stuff like that. So we'll go on and create this software component uh, using uh, our top. So we start with an auto search project, and I'll probably call this guy. All right, so I'll use four zero. I'll call this guy um, webinar heating element project. All right, go on and finish this. Okay, so. You'll have to have a route for this. So project. Okay. It's not necessary. You can actually go and create a route. Mm -hmm. I'll create an order that project. That will be a, I'll call this heating element. I've already done that. Why is he asking me for? Okay. Yeah, here it is. I'll call this. Uh, I need an ARXML file at the end. So I will uh, probably, after you open the file, you can call it uh, heating, seat heating dot ARXML. Yeah, you're good. All right, have the root, the root directory and all the uh, components will be under this uh, root directory. So that's how it will be planned, all right? So now we, the first step is, uh, uh, I'll close on all these uh, guys which are unnecessary. Yeah, okay, I'll leave this here. Yeah, Manjur, can you see the uh, PowerPoint? Yeah, yes, got it, yeah. yeah. So I'll just switch on, switch between these things. Uh, this is uh, what you call it as the heating element. I'm sorry. I might probably call this as a, uh, this is the heating element ka software uh, component. So we'll first create this fellow, the application software component, which is heating element software component. All right. So for that, click on, right click, new child. You have elements here. So this heating element is an application software component so this is an application software component so once you click on right click you'll have a new child elements and uh, you have an application software component type and you should give it a short name every see uh, remember in autosort whenever you configure any component or runnable or whatever uh, element is being conferred, it has to be given with a shorter, short name or it will throw an error or it will not pass an autosar validation. That's the plan, that's the idea, okay? So every software component or anything which we create has to be given a short name. So I will call this heating controller. All right, so this is the heating controller element that we have talked about. So we have created an software component. We have created an application software component. The next step is to create ports. That's the next step. So in the application software component, click on the new child. Don't click on the root. 
because the you will find that the applic the ports are attached to the application software component it's inside the application software component whereas the interface is outside the application software component so you will have to click application software component new type and you have ports all right so we need a sender port and the sender port is represented by an r port prototype all right so we will configure these two oh i'm sorry i will configure these two guys that is the status of the seat uh, which primarily tells whether a passenger is seated on the seat or not so these two are not sender ports these are two are receiver ports so we will get two receiver ports okay so this is an r port is nothing but a receiver port all right okay now you need to configure this up uh, give it a name this i will call it as uh, seat switch status I'm sorry switch status left all right so this fellow also has to be connected to the interface but we haven't configured the interface so we'll just leave it now uh, i can probably copy this and uh, i'll paste it here so this i have two guys this is my seat switch status right so we have done these two we have configured these two ports so seat switch status left and switch status right i will probably give it the same name seat switch left and switch switch right okay just to make sure that we are all uh, seat switch right and uh, this is say seat switch left so these two ports are configured now i will have to do uh, the next two ports uh, this is dial led left and dial led right these two ports are sender receiver interface but these are not receiver ports these are sender ports so i will go to the application component new child ports a sender port is called p port all right so this is the p port uh, he needs a name i will call it dial led left all right i will copy this guy take the application software component and paste it here right and i will call it dial led right great so we have configured the four ports all right so we have configured port number 1 2 3 4 we still have two more ports uh, which is the heating element left which is required this is a fellow which is going to turn on the coil and a heating element right so i have two more ports to be configured to this uh, software component so let me go ahead both these ports are client ports so when i call a client port a client port is usually a port which requests for a service all right and a request port in client is again an r port okay so it's requesting a service so what i will do is new child ports it's an r port because it's a fellow which is requesting a service so it's an r port uh, i will call this guy okay what's his name heating element left heating element left okay so and then you open a new child or i am at uh, so i duplicate this guy copy paste and uh, i will call this guy heating element right i think uh, yep there is a question uh, yes follow you have a question hello Can we reserve all our questions to the last, if you don't mind? No, actually. Hello. No, Karthik. No, it's clear. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. So, uh, heating element, right? Uh, so these two guys are uh, fellows which are uh, requesting a service, and just show you here. Here. 
so some fellow which is requesting a service here all right the fellow which is requesting a service here uh, i'm sorry here right the fellow which is requesting a service here is actually called as an r port all right so you may not find uh, uh, a sender port or a receive port you will only have r ports and p ports uh, so you should be careful in choosing the right port so since this fellow is requesting a service he's a client and since i've chosen an r port all right okay so this is done so we have configured all the ports uh, that are necessary for this element so we'll see what's the next step so ports are defined the next is we need to kind of create interfaces so we have three interfaces here we have a client server interface right this is i'm sorry this is a client server interface all right we can instantiate the software component so this is a client server interface we have a sender receiver interface here and we will also need an interface here uh, for the seed status from where to draw on the data so there are primarily three uh, uh, interfaces that are uh, uh, available so we need to create three interfaces and as i said it is outside the application software component so if you click on here and try and search for an interface you won't get an interface so you should go back to the root click right new child elements we will first do the sender receiver interface so i'll click yes and uh, here you go you have a sender receiver interface all right so let's configure the sender receiver interface i will give him the name uh, seat status since it's an interface i will call it if all right so is a state status interface uh, a sender receiver interface will pick up the data elements so i need to do that okay so data elements variable data element all right so just check it here we'll come to this later all right right so this is the first uh, interface the second interface is for the uh, led dial so i will do an led dial interface all right click on root new child elements this is again a sender receiver interface so here you go sender receiver interface this is i'll give it a short name led dial i f great here you go and uh, this guy is use all right so there we go okay i'll probably call this uh, seat status give it a short name seat status data for the interface and here again for the led i'll call this led data because it's primarily picking up the data right so i'm just giving it and we have the third fellow uh the third interface is uh, uh here it's a client service interface against these two are like sender receiver interface this is a client server interface so i will call create one new child elements i have line c here go mm -hmm. i don't find a c i don't find a client server interface here it is sorry yeah all right so uh i'll call this as a coil if because it's reached out to the coil so i'll call it as a coil if yep and uh, new child here client uh, server interface are based on operations not on data so we need to configure what operation it is requesting for so go to this and you have operations so it's a client server operation all right i will call this turn on coil operation all right i mean just for the name of convenience i'm keeping it 
all right new child and he will have an argument set an argument data prototype file on argument And most important, uh, it tells you what is the direction. Uh, this is a client. When you say, I'm sorry, a client, this fellow is requesting for a service to the server. So you might probably have to call it out, right? So that's pretty much about the interface, right? So what we have done right now, we have created an application software component, the heating element software component. We have created six ports. We have created three interports. Now what we need to do, these fellows need to know how they communicate, right? So we're going to attach this port with this interface. So that's the next step. All right, so go to the application software component, pick on this port, the switch, switch left is connected to the seat status interface, right? So required interface, here it is, go ahead and configure it. Here you go, configure it. Both these fellows are connected to the seat status interface. All right, a dial LED will be connected to the dial LED interface. Here again, you have right, this interface, this fellow is connected to our client server interface, which is your coil IF. Here again, see this fellow has changed the symbol. All right. And here again, IF. Great. So we have configured our ports. We have, I mean, we have created an application software component. We have configured the ports. We have configured our interface and we have connected the clients and the Right, but what's missing is uh, we just don't have one software component. We have three software components, right? We have a, a heating element software component. We have an LED dial software component. We have a coil software component. So we have three software components. So we, let's go on and create these two software components, the LED dial and the coil software component, okay? So again, it's on the root, right click, elements, and uh, you will create an application software component. All right, so you have an application software component here and uh, I will call this LED tile type. Let's call the software components with some type so that just to distinguish, I'll call this type. It's pretty a bunch of naming convention that's used, I'm just calling it type. So it's saying it's a software component type. Oh, I made a mistake. This is not an application software component. This is a, a sensor actuator software component. Uh, if you look at it, uh, uh, software components can be broadly classified into two types in, uh, uh, there are like say many software components, but in an application, in this particular application, we are primarily using two types of software components. One is uh, an application software component and the second one is a sensor actuator software component. So what do you mean by a sensor actuator? These two guys, an LED dial is more of a sensor. Uh, the coil is more of an actuator. So I will probably call this as a sensor actuator software component. And this is a pure software application software component by itself. So you can, uh, this is an application software component type and this is a sensor software component type. So I'm going to use, I'll delete this guy. I'm sorry, I've deleted that. Okay, I'm going to create the next. Uh, uh oh, I'm going to delete this because I will prefer uh, what do you call sensors element press sen s because it's a sensor actuator software component type. Pretty much the same work, but it's got a different uh, look and feel to it. All right, so I will call this LED dial type. Got it. And he's got one port. I will call this name. He's a receiver port from the heating element. He receives the data from the uh, heating element and uh, switches on the LED. I can call this uh, LED, short name. 
and is connected to the LED dial interface. Yeah. So I created the component. I created the port. I've also connected the interface because we have already configured the interface. Great. So this is done. The next uh, is again. We've configured this software component. Now it's time to configure this software component, which is the coil. So I will go ahead and create this. How do I do it? Right click, new child, elements, and I will call this again. Uh, this is again an actuator, right? So sensor, actuator, software, component. And uh, I'll call this guy coil type. Yep. And he's got a port. It's a client server port, but that's okay. But this is a port which is providing the service. It's a client server port, but it's a provi it's providing the service. So if it's providing the service, it's a server, and the server is called by a P port prototype. So I will take this as a P port prototype because it's a server, and a server is always used with a P port. All right. So I will call this fellow coil underscore server operation. All right, and he's connected to the coil IF interface. All right. So he's providing in this way, that was this direction. All right, so we have configured the three software components. We have also configured the three interfaces. So this is the first step and uh, we've done all these things. So we have configured what we called as a virtual function bus level configuration is complete. So we have done that the next 10 to 15 minutes, we will do how an RTE is configured. But this is equivalent to what we call it in MATLAB. You can do this as a software architecture, but in RTAB, this is a creation of software components. You have created software components, ports, interfaces, and you've also defined how these components communicate with each other through what, right? So this is a virtual function bus level implementation that is done using RTAB. The next step is to do an RTE level implementation. So it is going, we're going to set what is the internal behavior. It is going to, uh, and configure the runnables. What are the runnables that is going to do that? So that's the next step. Let's go on and do that. All right. Right. So now we have three software components. So we will have to do uh, the inter, we have to configure the internal behavior and the runnables for all the three software components. All right. So uh, here we go. Uh, Take the software component, new child. I have uh, internal behaviors. Go on and configure the internal behavior for this guy. I will call it uh, uh, heating, okay, set coil, or I'll call it set heating coil. Uh, we might choose multiple instantation uh, if you need. Uh, whenever uh, you want to replicate the software component in another memory, you can go ahead and choose multiple instantation. That is depending upon your application and I leave it to you if you want to do that. But generally this is how it is done. And uh, so we could, yeah, new child. Once we have done, I'm going to configure the runnables, right? You have to create, configure the internal behavior and then runnables. Uh, I will call this runnable uh, start name runnable underscore heating Yeah, heating element, yep. or I can call it uh, dial LED. Is it okay, Mansoor? Can we call it as a dial LED? All right. 
So yeah. a dial LED run. The work of this runnable is primarily he is going to kind of uh, uh, read the data, right? Uh, so okay, before we have uh, heating LED, I have uh, seat status. Let me first do the seat status. We'll go in the same format. A runnable for seat status. So you have a port. Uh, I will call it seat status. I will call one moment. I'll use the same. Seat, switch, switch, left. All right. So this is a runnable entity for that. So the, you can uh, invoke it concurrently or not. I'm not going into the finer refinements of that. You could. Ref I will talk about what are the documents that you need to understand. And uh, this guy is primarily going to access the data or read the data. So I will call data read access. He picks up the data. All right. And uh, all right, so he will go, he will read the data from the seat status. So this is how the tree is configured. All right, so this is a runnable for the seat status left. He will okay. So he so this guy is going to pick it up uh, seat status left. As you know that we have already discussed uh, 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 this port when we talk about a sender receiver port. Sender will receive port is nothing but sending and receiving data. This is a R, uh, R port, which is a receiver port. So he needs to read the data, right? So I'm opening this and I'm picking up the local variable from this gate location. All right. So that's the how it's this configured. All right. Now I'm going to configure the next runnable. Yep, runnable entity. I will call it. Uh, uh huh. Short name. Runnable underscore uh, seat switch. Right. All right. I mean that's okay. We'll go ahead. Let's not waste time here. New child. Again, this is going to read data. So I will call data access and uh, I will have to pick up the element, right? And he's picking up it from the seat status data, period. All right, so both these guys are configured. All right, so he's picking up the data from this variable. Got it, right? Now we have to configure for the daily LED left and dial LED right. Click on right, new child, runnable. I will call this uh, short name. Uh, I'll call it runnable underscore uh, dial LED. Okay, left. Here it is. Okay, he's again going to access variables. I'm going to. But this is not going to re uh, read data. He is going to write data. He is going to send an information to the LED. So he's going to data write access. So he will write the data here. Okay. And uh, the access variable is nothing from LED data, right? So period. Here we go. I another runnable for dial LED write. Okay. Software new child runnables uh, uh, name short name uh, dial LED right. Oh, 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 I will call it uh, runnable underscore dial LED right. Uh huh. And uh, new child, I will probably. This and, uh, access variables. Here you go. And he's again dating data from the, he's going to write data to the LED data. There we go. So we have configured four renewables for these four sender receiver operations. Now we need to, I'm sorry, one, two, three, four. We need to configure two renewables for this time server operation. 
right so i will probably right click uh your runnable entity yep i'll call this uh uh huh runnable underscore eating element left operation all right but remember uh, we just uh, have discussed uh, uh, when it comes to a client server interface it's not accessing or sending data but it is actually requesting for operations right so we have to choose a server call point and i prove we take this as a synchronous server call point so this is calling the server all right so i am taking a synchronous call point so we we'll have to be very careful in configuring the runnable all right so this is a server call point new child what is the operation is going to do okay so context so he is going to pick up uh, that heating element left right so he is requesting the service to be done by this element so he is uh, doing that and uh, this is the request he is asking to do all right so when we call, when we configure a runnable for a server or i'm sorry a client we should make sure we choose the right runnable that means the runnable uh, once uh, is configured it has to kind of uh, go and call the server so you use server call points and depending upon your application you can use a synchronous or a asynchronous server call point and once you call the server you should remember the it should be taken operations and in operations you will have to choose which uh, uh, destination you will have to call uh, so it it calls this particular application the heating control it's it's part of this application it is reaching out to this port and it is requesting this operation right so this is uh, for the left we will have to replicate it for the right i'll call runnables runnable entity i will call via there almost runnable underscore uh, heating element right Uh oh up okay and uh, i will put this uh, you need to configure this fellow server call points synchronous server call points and uh, i will probably set up operation yeah so the target port is uh, the heat element right okay is going to this fellow uh this is the operation request yeah so we're done so <laughs> we have configured all the runnables for the uh what do you call this particular application the heating controller type application it had uh, all these elements and we have configured the internal software component and the runnables so a runnable primarily tells which when when we configure the rte which we will go in the later stages of our uh, webinars uh, so when we configure the rte and we call the rte we will call these runnables all right to execute the function so that is the whole idea all right okay now we have two more software components this is fast we can do that yep or i will limit uh, my scope yep let's finish this not too complicated let's spend some time finish this up all right so i as you said we we'll have to configure the uh, internal behaviors i have to add a software component behavior okay i will call this as um, uh, set led we will instantiate or not that on is based on the application we are not working on how we are going to build the application at this point of the time might probably look at it runnable entity okay i will call this runnable uh, what do you call runnable 
underscore seat. I'm sorry, set LED. All right, so that's done. And there's a client server fellow, so he's nothing but uh, he's uh, getting access. Yeah, he's reading the data. Did I choose reading the data? Yep. I'm sorry, I made a mistake here. I should be choosing new child data read access. Yep. And new child access variable. I will probably LED data. It's picking up data from the LED. So we're good. And uh, again, we have a server guy here. Another application software component. I will have to create an internal behavior. And uh, I call this uh, short name uh, set coil. Okay. And I will configure a runnable. It's uh, it's a server runnable, yeah. Runnable underscore uh, set coil. It's a server runnable. So when I have to configure a server runnable, you have to be. It's how does it being triggered? It is triggered from an external point. When there is an operation request from a particular uh, client, it gets triggered. So you should choose an external triggering point. All right. So new child. What is the trigger? Here you have, this is the port which is providing the operation. The target trigger is, uh oh, that's okay. We haven't added that and we do that, we will get the target trigger, all right? So that's pretty much about it, right? So we've configured all these, uh, right now we have, uh, just one last step is away. So we have configured a VFB level, we have configured the RTE implementation, and the final is the implementation level. So all we need to do is we need to tell the uh, system file whether it has to be, you have to generate a C code or a Java code or whatever it is, right? So go to this auto start component, new child, okay. Anzo, can you help me with the implementation? How do I find it? Oh, SWC, oh my God. Manzur? Yeah, yes. So SWC in I'm just trying to locate it. Yep, here it is. All right. So all you have to do is uh, in the choose the SWC implementation. You need to call the short name, uh, which you can do. You need to choose the programming language C. Uh, this is for primarily you need one for set coil. Yeah, and uh, you can say coil one. I mean, first we'll go in the same order. Uh, we will choose it for uh, heating seat, heating element, and I will call it for the heating element. Yep. And uh, two more uh, last step. We are almost there. Elements plus yes. S W C. Implementation. You need a code for uh, LED now. Short name, you can call it as uh, LED implementation, whatever you call it. Already, I, 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 we should follow a standard uh, naming methodology. And uh, again, uh, the programming language is C. Here we go. And the last one, we need to add one more for the coil. And with that, we are done. Elements of SW. Here we go. Mm -hmm. 
Hmm? This is what you call it as uh, uh, I think already we have created the controller, coil. right? Uh, coil we have created. Yeah, coil. Right? This is like for the controller. Coil we had already created one. Oh, this fellow is it? Yes. Controller, yeah? Behavior of the qualities, yeah. Programming language is C. Yep, so this is done. I think doubt. I think I yep, one second. I'm just, just save this control S and uh, you will have this ARXML file here. All right. And uh, you could, just give me one moment. I'm finishing this off. Uh, go to workspace, uh, webinar, yep, here it is. Oh, it's not saved. Here you go. So here is your complete ARXML file um, in terms of an AutoSAR standard. You could actually import this file in different tools and generate your .c and .h header files. And then you can start coding your logic into it. So you completely taken all those things. So all the ports are like say configured. Yeah, so that's a quick, uh, Introduction, any questions? I'm like glad to answer. Yeah, actually, so you can open the, 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 the example uh, uh, project. Can you be a little louder? I'm not able to hear you. No, you can open the example project. There we have created some controller, right? Yeah. Yeah, in controller, you have selected some behavior, right? Why you are selecting the behavior? Uh, one moment, just give me one second. Uh, okay, this is the controller type. Yeah, good. No, no, below, below, last one. Which one? Last one, last controller, last one. Here? Yeah, here you are selecting the behavior, right? Why right. you are selecting that one? Sorry? No, why you are selecting that behavior? Uh, so the behavior, there are three software components, right? We have configured three software components. We need to have uh, three implementation for three software components. That's it. First, you configure for... Uh, uh, kit controller type, second you configure for uh, LED tile type, and the third is one uh, you can configure it for the seat state. I mean, this coil type, three software comp implementation for three uh, so application software components. That's it. Okay, that's what the coil, uh, the first one we have created the coil, right? So, coil also you are, you are selecting that same behavior, right? What is I the think maybe difference? out of uh, in a hurry I would have done that, but you need to okay. Let me just check. Uh, here it is set LED. Oh no, this yeah. is not the one. Here, right? The LED implementation you are selected the correct one. Set LED. Okay. But coil under the controller you are selected. Uh, set coil. I think then this is the guy. Yeah. Yeah. I have to check the three components. See, this is LED implementation, right? So LED implementation, I have selected uh, this guy, it is right, perfect. For controller, I need to, okay, let's, for the controller, I will actually set, uh, coil. yeah, this should be the right one. Yeah. And uh, here I have the coil. First one, first one. Here it is. Yeah. Here it should be set, set coil. coil, correct. Yeah. yeah, thanks. I think this is the right one. Yeah, and one more thing. Okay, finally, this tool is exporting the ARXML file, right? Correct. But uh, why you are selecting the programming language as C? No, that is, uh, you You can uh, do it in uh, Java also. I mean, uh, since we are talking about, see, we will be following a methodology. Uh, in our series of webinars, what we are planning to do is we are, uh, we will be having boards. Uh, we will take you to a microcontroller layer and all those things. 
Uh, so we have implemented it in C. We will teach you how to do it in C and stuff like that. So that is why we have chosen C. You can choose whatever language. Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, can you please go to that? Uh, you have created some file, right? Uh, in fact? your what folder? In what workspace? Workspace. Uh, here the workspace, right? Yeah. Yep. Uh, just know you have saved some file, right? In One moment. Yeah, yeah. Just, this is the file. This is the file. This is the ARXML file. Yeah, okay. Here it is. Yeah. As you yeah, create yeah, okay. this, it gets updated. That's it. Okay. Okay. The based on the microcontroller, we have to select the languages. Which microcontroller it supports the language? See, so like usually, that, uh, usually, 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 uh, you use C, right? You usually use C. Uh, development uh, happens in C. So yeah, correct. Uh, that is the reason why uh, we choose C. That's the idea. Oh, okay. Okay. In, in Bosch, they are doing everything in C itself. So that's what Sorry? I call it. No, 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 no problem. That's it. Yeah. 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 Uh, I mean, the uh, microcontroller that we have chosen to demonstrate over the series of uh, webinars is uh, uh, will be working on C. It is uh, C compatible, and uh, we we want to just carry out. We want to run you through the whole process. So that is why I have chosen that same story code. We'll we'll implement this uh, from uh, the application layer to the top. I mean, bottom down layer, and we'll demonstrate how it uh, works. So that's the reason. Yeah. Okay. And one more doubt, Karthik. Yeah. Actually, the uh, this is for uh, comes under the C C keeping uh, concept, right? This concept already developed in some other companies. Are we have to? I am not able to hear you. Sorry, it can be a little louder. One moment. I'm just now? checking my volume. Ah, yeah, I'm I'm able to hear you. Please go ahead. Yeah. Actually, the C T C T thing comma concept is there, right? Correct. This is a new feature or what? The application you're talking about. Yeah, actually, uh, uh, okay. In uh, some other companies, we don't have. Ex uh, I I couldn't enable these things. Okay, uh -huh. just an ask, asking to you. This is the new future. Yeah, we are able to uh, create the in from handset or what? No, it's not something which is related to handset. Uh, I'll just give you a quick uh, reference. All right. Uh, uh, these are the three reference documents uh, that we have uh, used as a reference, right? Uh, one is uh, uh, you can go to autosar.org and you will find all these documents. Uh, these three documents you will have to study as a software application component developer to uh, kind of uh, design these softwares, all right, uh, in an autosar methodology. In this uh, autosar.org, they have taken that as an application. This uh, is used as an example to explain the methodology or orders are so i thought we'll maintain the same standard that's it okay so it's it's, it's a standard example that is referred in autosar.org so we are just taking the same as an uh, reference that's it okay. we can expand it to a airbag application or whatever application you can talk about we will be able to do that for that particular application but this is a generic uh, application that's referred in order that's the whole idea okay yeah I, i'm sorry i'm i'm not able to hear you some uh, there is i'm sorry uh, can you hear me uh, no, it's here. Yeah, uh, I can Kati, hear you. Now. I'm, I'm Ravi here. I'm Ravi. Hi, hi, Ravi. Yeah, hi. hi, hi uh, I just want to understand how this tool is different. From what is this? How does this tool huh? differ from the existing tools from you know, other, uh, you know, like Vector and other ones? For there okay. Are of, there are okay. Tools not from the user interface point of view or from what point? Ravi, uh, your voice is not clear, uh, but uh, if I uh, understand it right, your question is. How does your tool is different from the existing tools like uh, Vector? Is that the yeah, question? Yeah, yeah, correct, correct. Yeah. Correct. So, uh, see, Vector is a proprietary tool, uh, right? So, uh, the whole objective of Autosar was also to make sure that uh, uh, we don't uh, uh, rely on a lot of uh, proprietary tools. Like, say, for example, a DBC file, right, which mm -hmm. is created in Vector is a proprietary of uh, Vector. Uh, we don't have a, a standard uh, uh, template. So Autosar would, uh, want, did not want, it, uh, the organization did not want that to happen. That is why they have these uh, tools which are like say, 
uh, part of uh, autozar uh, uh, people who are part of autozar organizations can use these tools and it is free of cost so this is an autozar authoring tool yeah. this primarily an autozar authoring tool there are other tools also available in the market like say matlab by itself can be a autozar authoring tool uh, we are following a top down approach uh, in the sense so what we are doing is uh, uh, this is a top down approach i will call it here so what we do is uh, we we are uh, generating an ar xml file correct the next is uh, you will uh, uh, extract a .c.h file uh, here and then what you will do is you will actually code it manually code it uh, using c that is all the logic let's say on this condition you will do this all those things you will code the logic and you will generate an .c and .h file this is basically called as a, a top down approach there is also a bottom up approach in autosar that is possible the bottom up approach is where uh, you can use tools like simulink create the component all right in simulink you can create the component build the uh, what you call logic and based on the logic you can actually configure this fellow and generate a .c and .h file that's a bottom up approach and you will also generate an, you can also generate after configuring that fellow uh, from the simulink you can also generate a .ar xml file so that's a bottom up approach both the approaches are accepted as per autosar standards thanks thanks kartik yep. so if there are any no more questions then i think we'll wind the session yeah um, one i want to ask yeah, please uh, new to auto sir uh, so uh, i am right now working in com module uh huh so uh, uh, how do we collect all the requirements like we take sws and that like i try to collect requirements but i am not able to understand like how to implement it there right in uh, like how to create ar xml for that how to create bundles for that okay so uh, th there is uh, two uh, quick uh, things uh, you don't actually have uh, uh, ar xml file that comes along with uh, a com module requirement you should have an ar xml file which is given by the oem or whoever is your uh, uh, a supplier or uh, the client he should give you an ar xml file one right what bsw stack are you using based upon that uh, we will have to configure the uh, com module so the communication module is is a separate module by itself so uh, depending upon uh, what protocol you are using we will have to do that but all said and done you should have the ar xml file because the ar xml file is the reference for you to communicate with which rte and how do you access data so that's how it is you cannot uh, uh, yeah uh, we yeah. get ar xml then we create bundles right uh, correct 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 yes so uh, uh, will you be taking uh, like uh, any session on creating bundles yes yes we will also be taking a session we will actually have planning to have a complete session exclusively say a couple of hours for com module that will be part of our game plan both for interdependency software modules and uh, individual uh, software modules for both those applications we will do so we can do that like say accessing data from the hardware alone and also accessing data between components both those things we will do in the com module with different uh, uh, time uh, i mean different uh, uh, what do you call uh, timing events okay thank you Uh, if you don't mind, what is the stack that you are using for Hello. the BSW stack? What is the BSW stack that you are using? Are you asking for version four two two? No, no. Are you using a vector stack or you are you like using a Bosch stack? Uh, I don't know. I'm completely new here, but we work on KSR. It is similar to the R top you have said. I'm at okay. KPIT actually. It's a KPIT stack. Yeah, yeah. It's yes, a KPIT I'm stack. KPIT. Yes, 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 yes. We 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 will te tell you the methodology, but you can actually look at your stack and understand from the methodology. I think that should be possible. I have an yeah, I had an opportunity to work on that, so it's definitely possible. Yeah. Oh, hello. Yeah. Hello. 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 Fourteen, fourteen slide. Yeah, actually, yeah. see, based on the hockey picture, you worked on that ARXML file, right? Suppose right. if we are, uh, suppose if we are new component, 
where we should get the architecture actually which one i'm sorry if you are no no, no if if we have worked on that new architect uh, new com- new component software components okay so based on the software component we have to collect any architecture uh, like this or what ha huh, see this uh, if if you really want to understand the architecture and uh, in detail uh, the, the best uh, you have to uh, start with in order sir i recommend uh, view study this uh, document the order sir virtual function bus all right okay okay so uh, if you are able to study this uh, and understand it you will be able to uh, design any architecture uh, like say you can start from a single component uh, that you can start with and then you can actually expand it to uh, uh, multiple components that should not be a problem but this is uh, this is the fellow which tells you like say for example here you should use a sender receiver used uh, interface uh, where you should use a parameter interface where should you use i mean there are different types of application software components right say i have just there are like say seven or eight application software component types uh, we have just talked about two one is uh, uh, this flow and the other one is sensor there are other five six software component types which you have not discussed there are quite a few other interfaces which you have not discussed there are a lot of port types also which we have not discussed if you want to generally understand how all these things and draw this in a system level let's say for example on a system level you want to design this right then okay, this we is have the, to design this architecture yeah you mm-hmm. want to design this, this default the, yeah this is the uh, this is the uh, document that you should study okay if you uh, if you want come to the architecture we want to uh, discuss uh, we want to read up that the virtual function bus yes 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 so if uh, see there are there are three uh, uh, like say usually they say there are like say three opportunities in auto sir uh, in in terms of a career vertical one is in terms uh, you uh, you understand a few things uh, like these basic concepts and you go on to become an application software component developer here that's where many uh, like say some people work uh, yeah. if you are in a oem uh, yeah. but uh, there is another group like say for example uh, the, like say most of the tier 1 and tier 2 companies they work here bsw configuration some of them yeah. also build application software components but most of them work here at least i'm only talking about an in indian context uh, so this is uh, there is another thing you where you really understand rte and uh, uh, this vfb in a thorough fashion and then you on go on to become an architect architect is where you work for an oem where you build the whole uh, uh, system itself but in that you really need to understand both these ways before you go on to become an architect that's the three game plans that are available as a career in what is that uh, thanks Oh, hey Kartika, I want to know her here. Yeah, please. Yeah, uh, can we get this tool using our personal email ID? Can you? I'm sorry. Uh, I'm really sorry. Can you just be a little louder? Uh, can we get this uh, uh, tool, this startup tool, using our personal email ID? No, you can't. Uh, you will have to get it through your company only. Okay. Because uh, now company we are using the vector tools, which are like licensed versions. You could still develop this thing using vector. It's the same context. Yeah, yeah, uh, we could, but uh, we are we have a limited dongle, so uh-huh. you know uh, to work parallelly. I mean, to create these uh, software components, I believe that we can uh, create a software component using this RTOP, and we can import the same RX ARXML into that vector, right? Yes, yes, yes. You can do that. You can do that. Uh, so in that context, I'm asking if I could, if I have a limited version of these dongles. This so, there is no limited version. Uh, I mean, uh, for vector. for vector, ah, vector yeah 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 i know i i, I get it but uh, uh, it's not as difficult you can just uh, apply and you should be able to download it i don't think no, there's a challenge there no it's just like i, I can use my uh, i mean organization email id and i get this yes yes yes, right. yes yes okay thank you all right so uh, in the next session uh, uh, i the we, uh, we will come back again uh, in the next webinar uh, we will uh, go ahead and uh, uh, build our uh, application software instantiation we will generate an ecu dot h uh, dot file we will touch more about the rte concepts how uh, uh, two components like say we, uh, we have talked about uh, uh, these guys from a system level we will go into details on how these two components can establish a comp- uh, uh, connection and how do we work on that all those concepts we will touch upon in our next session 
that's the plan uh, as of uh, now. So we, uh, uh, maybe in another couple of weeks, we will finish this uh, application software component and we will move on to BSW and other areas. So thank you so much for your patient uh, hearing. Uh, we look forward to post you in the next session. And if you have uh, any queries, please yeah. go right to us. We'll be more uh, than happy to help Karthik, you. Uh, yeah. yeah, Manohar here uh, again. Uh, is this, uh, I mean, the recording is available in your uh, ANSIT, uh, that uh, YouTube channel, or? Uh... Yeah, yeah, uh, whatever, like last week's uh, session we have done, we have uh, uploaded yes. in our uh, YouTube channel. Correct. Uh, this week, again, we will upload it in our YouTube channel. Okay, then. thank you. We'll share the link with you. For sure. all the participants, we'll share the link with you. Sure, thank you. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Thank you. Have a wonderful day, week. Thanks. Yeah. Bye. You too. Thank you. Bye.